Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Janet Kelsey, Editor of Separation Science, and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest webinar in collaboration with Sepelco and Sigma Aldridge. Our topic today is Hillock Chromatography Theory and Method Development Practices. Let me introduce our presenter for today's webinar. James Bell obtained his BS degree from Plattsburgh State University and PhD in Analytical Chemistry from the Pennsylvania State University. Dave spent the first decade of his career within the pharmaceutical industry performing analytical method development using various forms of chromatography and electrophoresis. During the past 15 years working directly in the chromatography industry, Dave has focused his efforts on the design, development and application of stationary phases for use in HPLC and hyphenated techniques. In his current role of manager, pharmaceutical and bioanalytical research at Sepalco, Dr. Bell's main focus has been to research, publish, and present on the topic of molecular interactions that contribute to retention and selectivity in an array of chromatographic processes. And so without further ado, I'll turn the presentation over to Dave Bell. Dave. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, good day, everyone. Um, so I had the, uh, the opportunity today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's hillock chromatography. Uh, it's been a subject um, uh, that's uh, been prominent in uh, the past decade and is certainly something that uh, comes up at many, many of the conferences uh, around the world, um, mainly because uh, Hillock, in Hillock we're able to do some, uh, some separations that, are, that we tend not to be able to do in our reverse phase systems, um, and also uh, mainly due to the, uh, the compatibility that Hillock has with uh, mass spectrometry and the growing LCMS uh, practitioners around the world. Um, also, Hillock is complicated, uh, so you know, there's a there's certainly a research interest in the um, in the mechanisms and how it works and, and how we can control it. So I hope uh, hope I can at least impart uh, some information to you today. Uh, so no matter where you are, whether you're just a beginner in Hillock or you've been practicing for a while and have had some issues, uh, hopefully I can give you some information today that will help. So um, what I'm going to do today is uh, we're, first we're going to describe the, uh, the Hillock system and some of the prevailing uh, theories on retention mechanisms. Uh, we'll discuss uh, some of the various Hillock stationary phases and uh, uh, we'll talk uh, to, to in some detail about the interactions that uh, different stationary phases exhibit and how you can use them. And we'll use that information to discuss some of the method development practices and, and approaches that we take that I think might uh, be of service to you. And uh, along the lines, we'll, we'll also provide some tips and, and uh, indeed some cautions as they relate to method development in the hillock mode. Um, my aims here are to get an understanding of the retention mechanisms involved in hillock, and really this is the basis for uh, all, all our method development practices. Um, provide some concepts and, and models for retention, and uh, provide some method development hints and pitfalls, uh, some of the things that I've fallen into and some of the things that my colleagues and collaborators have, uh, have witnessed over the years. And uh, along the lines, we'll, we'll illustrate these with uh, a few examples that I hope will, will help. So you know, let's, let's take a look at the, the system uh, itself first. Um, what, we're, what we're dealing with here is a, um, instead of a greasy C18 type surface like we have in reverse phase and a aqueous mobile phase, well, we start off here is with a, a more polar stationary phase, which I'm depicting here as a uh, bare silica surface. And we introduce into that system a homogeneous binary mobile phase, typically high in acetonitrile content and uh, low in water content. But what happens is as this system equilibrates, the, the water in the mobile phase preferentially solvates that polar surface. And what we end up with is a aqueous rich environment near the silica surface or near the stationary phase surface and an aqueous depleted or organic rich uh, mobile phase. So as we, we add a polar molecule into the system, it sits in that organic, uh, uh, solvated by that organic system and is not very happy, would more rather um, be solvated by the aqueous system. So we tend, it tends to partition into that uh, semi-stagnant uh, uh, aqueous layer on the surface and that's where we get our retention. So based solely on this, the more polar a molecule is, the more it will like the water, 
the more retained it will be in that system. But unfortunately, it's not necessarily that simple. You know, and if we think about what we're trying to do, we're taking these polar analytes that are polar because they're either ionic or they exhibit strong dipoles or both, in fact, and so, that, so they're naturally interactive. And what we're doing is we're bringing those naturally interactive molecules very close to a polar surface, which is also very interactive. So we should expect, actually, that there are other strong interactions that take place along with the, the partitioning effect. And it, those strong interactions can be dipole interactions, specifically hydrogen bonding, or they can be ion exchange interactions with the negative charge that's exhibited by ionized surface silanol. 